Hey guys, welcome back. Draft Day Sports, college football, pro football, one of those footballs. Yesterday was college, today's pro. Yes, pro football 20. <laughs> Draft Day Sports, pro football 20, episode 5. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's a little early. Not too early, at least no insomnia last night. Uh, 7 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. Yay. Go us. Um, God, I wish I could sleep later than 7 o'clock. <laughs> just I just wish a um, little bit of a different episode today because there were some questions that came in in uh, some of the earlier episodes I don't know if I'm going to be able to answer all of them because I may not know the answer or it may just be a time of the season that we can't figure out the answer so I'll go through the questions we'll talk about them a little bit and then we'll get into the games uh, so, uh, Hugo, Hugh Bloom, welcome to the channel. Uh, don't know if you subscribed yet. Please do if you haven't. Uh, but, uh, Hugh, uh, thanks for checking out, uh, the new series here on Draft Day Sports, uh, 20. Uh, I think a lot of people are interested in free agency and the draft. Can you carry a large roster into training camp and have to make cuts? Uh, I guess we'll have to look at that more into the next season. Because, again, when if you go back to episode one, when we started this, it was right after the draft and we, we were in preseason. Um, now, a little bit of an answer to that question might be available. Uh, let me take a look. Did, uh, here we go. Transactions. Uh, oh, shit. It's only for the league. All right. Well, let's go back to... All right, well, there was free agency, so we can look here. So you can see there were multiple rounds of free agency. People were signed. Uh, so they were signing more players on top of the roster that you had, yes? All right, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, there's preseason week one. They were still signing people. All right, now there's some releases. Week one, released him, released him. So... Let's see, the Vikings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was up to Ben Gideon. Nine. So the Vikings released nine players. Patriots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, six for the Cardinals. So I'm going to take that as a... Yes, because you can see all of these teams are releasing players. And we actually released some players too. So if you go back to my episode one, I ran the auto adjustment. We moved players, <clears throat> excuse me, we moved players to the practice squad, but we also released three players. So I would guess that the answer to that would be yes. Um, that you can carry a larger roster and then have to make cuts. I think we've shown that. Now, we'll check out another preseason, of course, and uh, training camp and whatnot. But based on what I'm seeing here in the league transactions, there was a lot of signings and then a lot of cuts. So they were signing more players than they needed. And then I know all I did was I had to move players to my practice squad, and we still cut three players. So... Hugh, I think the answer to question number one is yes. Um, Tyler Simmons says, RC, I hate to tell you, but in the old days, games just ended in ties. Sudden death is relatively new since the merger. They've never played until there was a winner except championship games. I guess when I think back to the old days, I think back to the, uh, to the New York Giants game that was like the endless overtime game. I forget who they played. Maybe It may have been the – if I said it, I'm going to be wrong. It, I know it was the Giants. I know the Giants were involved in it. Um, and it was, you know, they just played. So, anyway, yes, it may not be realistic in the way that – uh, the league was back in the day, but that's how I wanted to set up my league because I just think that's more realistic. You play till you win. <laughs> so, uh, Tyler, thanks for pointing out my failure. And for those of you that don't know, Tyler's actually a friend of mine. Um, so, so he'll pick at me a lot. 
uh, Jeffrey Cronover. Crown Crown I hope I got the pronunciation at least close. Crownover or Cronover? Crownover or Cronover? Yep, not sure which one it is, but it's one of those, I'm pretty sure. I would put money that one of those two is right. His question was, could you show how the trading system works in this game? I have uh, Pro Football 19 and watched your 18 and 17 series a few years back. Keep up the good work. Well, Jeffrey, thank you for saying I do good work. I do try hard. Um, so as I mentioned at that point, I had already recorded episodes three and four. Uh, and I'm recording this on Sunday morning. So uh, episode four goes up tomorrow. This one will go up on Wednesday. So uh, let's see. So I told him I would try to pop into the trade screen as soon as I can and open it. Being that we're past the trade window, I don't know if we can get into it. But I think we can. Trade players right there. Hello. There we go. All right, so we do have trade options. All right, so we can view a league trade block. So these are all guys that uh, are on the trade block uh, from other clubs. You can put players up on the trade block as well. So you've got all their basic information. You can sort by position. You can filter by certain things. Um, Now, I am guessing, I mean, we're in week 16. I, I think there is a trade deadline, I'm pretty damn sure. Uh, view the trade window. And the other question was, uh, let's see, could you show how the trading system works? And then there was another question, I'm pretty sure. I just have to find it about free agency in the draft. Um, I want to say I saw somebody asked about trading draft picks. So, yeah, right here, you can actually, uh, you can see the player, you can see the salary, uh, your sal their salary remaining, so you can tell if you're over or under the cap, how much cap room they have. And, yes, right here, you do have draft picks, for the next 2021 20, 22 so the next three years so you have three years into the future of draft picks that you could trade so there you go uh so yes you can trade draft picks um up to three years out so hopefully that answers that question you can view that trade block and see if there's any players that you want to trade for. And you can sort these. Boom. All right, so the best player would be a fullback, Javorski Lane from the Saints. A 90, uh, Lonnie Pryor. A lot of fullbacks. Carlos Hyde. He went to Ohio State, though, so, yeah, you know, nobody really wants him. <laughs> Dalvin Cook. Uh, Dalvin Cook's pretty good. Florida State kid. Uh, 24, yeah, he's not bad. But I, I have Ezekiel Elliott, so I don't need him now. If Ezekiel Elliott was holding out two years early, I might trade for uh, for Cook. I uh, would not mind that. But I'm not going to make any trades right now. Uh, and I'm certainly not. I don't make trades just to make them. Uh, you know, so... Anyway, I think that was all the questions that I had seen. Uh, let's see. A lot of people in regards uh, to uh, where, uh, where can they be found? Oh, yeah, okay. Hugh, Hugh Bloom had also asked uh, on another video, can you trade draft picks during the annual draft? I'm not sure about the first one because there's a couple of ways you can set it up. I set it up for players to be automatically assigned to their real teams. Um, so it's possible that if you set it up for like a fantasy style draft to start your game, that you could actually, if your pick came up, you could try to trade that trade down uh, and do that. So something to think about. Uh, let's see. And I'm guessing because draft picks are included, and we may look at this come next draft is trading back or trading up. 
uh, and trying to accumulate picks or whatever. Uh, what else? There were a couple of other questions. Um, uh, Hugh, you asked another question. In regard to the ratings, are the ratings static or do they vary according to staff opinion? Kind of like in Football Manager, uh, which is another, I do a series for that. Um, and so I'm a little, I'm familiar with that game. Uh, where a defensive coordinator or offensive coordinator may have slightly different opinions on a player. Um, the ratings are not static. Uh, if you go back where we talk about ratings, so as an example, Javorski Lane has a 90 overall rating. Now remember that OVR is his rating among every fullback in the league. So at the end of this season, What's going to happen? Well, you're going to have some fullbacks that will retire or get cut and no longer be in the league. And then you'll have a new crop of fullbacks coming into the league from the college ranks via the draft, right? So that's going to add, add and deduct different people in that position from the database. And that will adjust your OVR. So you could see... Uh, you know, let's say that we have, uh, th you know, three or four potential Hall of Fame fullbacks come in that all have, you know, 98, 99, 100 ratings as fullbacks. Well, you know, then Lane next season, you know, he, he may have a deduction. He may see a reduction in his stats because he'll be a year older at 33. And I'm assuming that happens, uh, that you're not going to have the same ratings at, at 28 that you had at 21. And uh, the same ratings at uh, 35 that you had at 28, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, and I know what happens when you assume things, but I think that's a safe assumption, assumption, excuse me. So your OBR could change and that's going to change just because of uh, player input and player deduction, uh, if that makes sense. Now, as far as your coaches uh, I don't know the answer to that. Now, we did talk, I think, last episode, uh, if we go to our staff. I re-signed David Brooks, my offensive coordinator, but I'm letting Cornell Brannon and my defensive coordinator, Edward Graham, go. Uh, I'm going to hire new guys in the offseason. Uh, there is a window that you can do that. So... Um, we will. I will be hiring a new coach. I don't like this particular guy. Uh, good morale, but you know, I want him to be. You know, I want much better leadership and motivation uh, and intelligence. You know, I want him to be able. And and you know, he needs to be a little bit better. I don't know if he. I don't know if it's important for head coaches to have this, but you know, the training. But you know. I think he needs to be a little bit better here, at least. So I'm not going to fire him. It's too late in the year anyway. So we'll be able to look at some of our players uh, come the beginning of next season when I hire a new coach and see if that translates into some different looking ratings. I don't believe, if I had to guess, and this is just a guess, if I had to guess, I don't believe your staff makes a real big difference. Because if we look at these guys, well, you know, they do have an assessability and assess potential. Um, so if we go into our roster, well, well that's records. All right, depth chart. Um, let's see. Let's look at Dak Prescott. So I don't see. Analysis. Ratings progress. I don't see anything particular about a current ability and then a potential ability like you see in a lot of games um, 
So I don't know exactly what they're analyzing or how. I will post that question for for us somewhere uh, that I you know on one of the sites that I use for this game, and I'll see if somebody a little more informed can uh, can clue me in on that. And if I do if I do, I'll, I'll get an answer to you. But uh, then we may be able to find out here in the next episode or two, uh, moving forward into the next season. But you know, again, I know that OVR rating is kind of based on the league itself, so I think that's just a a generated number from a league perspective that really wouldn't have anything to do with your coaches i, I don't guess uh so that's just a guess uh so anyway hope that answers some of your questions keep them coming if you have them i will do my best to either answer them or find answers for us because you know anything new that i can learn about the game uh, as he mentioned i did not play 19 at all and so i haven't even seen this game since uh 8 pf 18 uh until i opened this and loaded it up with you guys in episode one so uh anyway let's get to the match today uh we are gonna go and uh, i guess we gotta close old dax window here and we've got our tight ends depth chart all right we're gonna go ahead and simulate the week And we will go back. Hello? Hello? Okay. That's weird. Joe Games. There we are. All right. 16, 17. Joe score. Who? Philadelphia crushed us 35 to 14. Not good. Prescott did uh, was 23 of 39, 273 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Not great, fellas. Elliott, 17 for 66. Uh, yeah, you're not going to get $14 million a year out of me if you can't even average four yards a carry, buddy. Uh, Hearns, I think Hearns has been the surprise of the season. Uh, Cooper's been all right, but Hearns is... Uh, Hearns has lit it up. All right, so if we go to uh, standings, let's go there first. So we finish 8-8, eight and eight and we win the division somehow with the tiebreaker. I guess it's conference record. Nice, nice. All right, so the National, National uh, NFC East was a tough conference this year. Uh, definitely would not have made the playoffs in any other and how would you like to be Carolina being 10 and 6 and missing the playoffs because an 8 and 8 team won their division? That's the case for reseeding, but you know, but you also have to take into uh, you know, conference strength and everything else, but all right, let's go into the playoff screen. Now, how, can I get back to that? Can I get back to that? probably here all right well we are playing the falcons the packers are playing the seahawks titans Bengals, and jets raiders oh my god what did you guys think about the antonio brown thing yesterday uh so again i'm recording this on sunday speaking of the raiders and the patriots um what a shit show i think that guy's an idiot myself um, I'm just thankful none of my team signed him. I would not want that train wreck on my team. Uh, oh God, I think he is. I think he is stupid as hell. Oh well. Anyway, just my my two cents, which is you know what that's worth. It's worth nothing. All right, let's get into the playoffs. Uh, so we're going to uh, simulate the week. We're in the wild card. Yes, I think. Oh my God, we win 27 to 20 because the Falcons suck. Because um, I like the Saints too, and the Falcons are big rivals with the Saints. So yes, I'm uh, very happy to beat them. Let's check out the box score. Ezekiel Elliott, 106 yards and two touchdowns. Nice. Byron Jones, our free safety, seven tackles, one interception. Prescott, 19 of 31. So 19, that would be 38 at 50%. So, yeah, well over 60% here, an 80 rating, one touchdown. Hearns again with the most receptions, yardage. 
Jason Witten got the touchdown on the through the air. Good deal. Good deal. All right, so that moves us into uh, the divisional round against the Lions. Packers beat the Seahawks by three. They'll take on the Saints. Uh, let's see, the Titans beat the Bengals. They'll take on the Patriots. And then the Raiders got blown out by the Jets, 33-23. to 23. Just out of curiosity. Trevor Simeon, are you shitting me? Le'Veon Bell, how did he do this year? 1,400 yards rushing, 22 touchdowns. That won't suck for the Jets this year. Not a big fan of what he did either, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I want to go, I want to go, yeah, let's go, ch I want to check something out here real quick. Uh, New York, um, nope, Miami, New England, Jets. Jets statistics passing. Sam Darnold, 14 starts, 3,300 yards, 18 touchdowns. Not a bad season. Is he hurt? Is he hurt? How do I find that out? Well, we can go back to roster. Oh, fractured cheekbone. I didn't realize you could get a dark tan like that in New York. I thought the weather was too bad. <laughs> I'm just joking. Because um, Sam's pretty pasty. <laughs> he, he'd sunburn. Uh, not a bad season for him, but that must be why Trevor Simeon played. And they still won against the Raiders. Here's a thought for you, and it would be an interesting idea to try i don't know if it would work in real life so you look at teams like seattle with russell wilson uh the rams with jared goff up until this week when he signed that huge deal um you know you have these team uh you know the chiefs with patrick mahomes currently uh where they're on their rookie contract right so they're making very little, like Sam Darnold making 637000 And then you've got, you know, these guys like Brady, Breeze, and, you know, they're making $20, $30 million a season. Naturally, with a hard salary cap, that's less money you can pay anybody else, right? So you couldn't afford to pay Le'Veon Bell $6.4 million if you were paying Sam Darnold $25 million. So the thought process, and I heard this, I heard this on the radio um, last week, uh, Thursday or Friday, and they were saying, so what you should do, or what somebody should try to do, is a lot of these guys are serviceable quarterbacks. Like you know, like I, I feel about Dak Prescott, I like Dak personally, and I think he's definitely a serviceable quarterback. I don't think he's a Hall of Fame level quarterback. And I don't think he can carry a team by himself like Brady or Breeze or somebody like that. Uh, he needs people around him. And it's been shown that when he doesn't have Zeke or, he, you know, before he had, even when he had Zeke but didn't have Amari, last year he struggles. He is not a capable quarterback to go out and win games by himself on a regular basis. So the thought process was basically draft a quarterback every single year, right? Every year with a, with maybe not your first rounder, but at least a second rounder, third rounder at worst, right? And you get them for four years. And if they develop, then you can either replace your existing quarterback trade him or let him go to free agency because if he's a protected free agent you get like two first round picks in real life not sure about the game so let's use Dak as an example he's in the last year he has one more year on his deal they can franchise tag him twice so they can they can tie him up for a couple of years 
So if they would draft a quarterback in the, if they would have drafted one last year would have been better, but if they would draft one this year coming up and then next year, the following year, and then see what kind of, what, how those guys develop. Cause remember Dak was a fourth round surprise, right? Nobody thought he was going to be even remotely decent. Um, so the idea is that I heard was, so you draft a quarterback and then either you trade that quarterback, the rookie, and you just get your, you know, you at least get a draft pick back, kind of like what the Patriots did with Garoppolo. You at least get a second back for him, if not a, a first. Or you plug in the new rookie and have him for that rookie period on his contract and let your senior guy go to free agency and then if somebody signs him in free agency, then, you know, like I said, I think you get two first round picks for a protected free agent. So then you have two, two more first round picks that you could go out and sign better players. And that's where you can stock up on these veterans that are really, really good that can make your team better. Anyway, it's certainly off the beaten path, and it you know that's what got my attention about it. But you know it was it was at least worth talking about. Uh, all right, let's go back to uh, our club right here. Uh, there is a mod over at the uh, Wolverine Studios forum uh, for the real name. So I went in and edited the names, but there's a mod that will change the names and the logos. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I've already done the names and I'm wondering if you have to do that before you start your league. Uh, so I don't want to mess anything up now that we've started this. If I ever, you know, and this, this is going to be a career with Dallas. So we'll just, you know, we're, we'll just make do with what we got. All right. Um, so we're playing Detroit. Again, I really hope that there, if you have somebody seriously injured, that you would get an email because if not, that's pretty bad. And I would recommend fixing that. Uh, let's go to our roster. I'll scroll down. Jalen Smith. See, he's out. I should have an email that Jalen Smith is out. Right? I should. I didn't. So Wolverine, fix that. Uh, let's see. Let's go to our defense. There's Jalen Smith. So I guess we don't have to change this. If he's out, he's not going to play. And it should go to the second and third. So I'm going to go on that assumption, right? That's what I'm going to assume. We're playing, and if we're playing the Lions, right? Let's look at the matchup. The Lions. Why does it not have the Lions information over here? It should. It should. Oh, well. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, simulate the week. Yes. Oh, my God. Really? The Lions are for real. Wow. How crazy is that? I still think it should show their record. It's just my, you know, my opinion. My opinion. Uh, Prescott, a 62 rating, and that is why he is not a $40 million quarterback. I don't even think he's a $30 million quarterback. Just me. 17. Yeah. You know, percentage-wise, he was all right. You know, but how many short passes is that? 187 yards and two picks? That sucks. Three yards of carry. That's horrible. And we're supposed to have a great offensive line. Speaking of, do I do I start do I re, you know where do I build my team? Do I build it around the offensive line or not? Um, well, we're 29 minutes into the video. I know it took a lot longer for this episode because of the questions. That's okay. Still try to keep them to uh, to 30 minutes here. So let's go ahead and knock these out. So we have uh, the Packers beat the Lions 35-17. Patriots beat the Jaguars. That's a surprise. 27-23. Uh, Dante Hightower. Tom Brady, 347 yards and three touchdowns. So what's the... Uh, Paxton Lynch. Remember they signed him as a free agent? Who's the Jacksonville quarterback this season? Leonard Fournette. Ooh. 
I like, and I like Leonard. He he went to LSU. Big win for LSU over Texas last night. Uh, anyway, and the Patriots and the Packers. Boom. Oh my God! Hello, forty-four to fourteen. Aaron Jones, one hundred and two yards rushing and three touchdowns. Brady, 21 of 34, two touchdowns, a pick. Aaron Rodgers got knocked out, and Deshaun Kaiser went 14 of 19. Uh, that's fake, fake news. <laughs> There's no way Kaiser went 14 of 19. Wow. Josh Gordon, seven of seven for 88. He ended up with almost 1,300 yards receiving and eight touchdowns. So yeah, we mentioned earlier. So Josh Gordon and uh, Antonio Brown. Wow, that's uh, honestly that's a hell of a one-two punch at receiver. But the what's the over under on games played this year? Is it like four combined before Gordon gets suspended for another drug offense and a B? I because you know you know. Brown's going to send a tweet out or, or some video from the sideline or the locker room, and Belichick's going to have a mental meltdown. And Brady's going to try to be himself and try to be the leader that, you know, keeps these guys in line. And Brown's going to call him a racial name like he did with his GM and threaten to punch Brady in the face. And they're going to end up firing the guy. Uh, it's just a matter of when, not if, I think. Because I think he's too stupid to keep his shit in check, personally. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, there is our season. So the Packers win the uh, overall um, season awards. I guess we can get to that. So let's do that. Uh, Andy Dalton, MVP. You've got to be kidding. That's not possible. Aaron Rodgers, the playoff MVP. Dalton, the offensive MVP. Uh, Wilkerson, the defensive end from Pittsburgh. 15 sacks and a safety is the uh, defensive MVP. Kyler Murray, 2,074 yards, 11 touchdowns. That's not very good. Offensive rookie of the year. And White, the linebacker from Tampa Bay, five sacks, one fumble recovery, one interception, defensive rookie of the year. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oh, I get to pick? No, I don't like that. I don't want to pick. That should be, no. But, yeah, it shouldn't be Andy Dalton, I don't think. <laughs> but... I mean, he out threw Aaron Rodgers, and I'm not giving it to Dak because Dak didn't. I mean, you know, look at Dak, 4,500 yards and 21 touchdowns. 390 out of 619. Certainly doesn't have the completion percentage. Yeah, I don't know. Derek Carr, 4,600 yards, 21 touchdowns. 1,800 yard. Oh, there's Antonio. 1,800 yards receiving and 12 touchdowns. Drew Brees, 3,332 touchdowns. Another good year for him. Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to vote for that. Pro Bowl. There's the roster. Uh, sim the Pro Bowl. Please just get it out of the way. Show the score. 41-13 National League. Nice. Moving on because nobody cares about the Pro Bowl. And end of season. Oh, well, you know what? Let's cancel that. I don't believe. One last thing for us to check. Uh, contracts. I think we looked at this. We do not have anybody that's a free agent. So the easy way to look is... We're in 2019, so at the end of this year, if they're not under contract, the 2020 year will be blank, kind of like this year is for Lyle College, right? So let's scroll down, and we've got everybody there. 
you know what i am gonna let's try something let's try something hearns had a pretty good year right i don't know that hearns wears glasses or is white but that's okay pictures are fake no big deal Tyron Smith. Let's look at him. All right, he's got an OBR of 90. He's 29 years old. So he's in his prime, right? He's in his prime. He's got a 100 rating as a tackle. Strength, not very, not, not as agile as you would like, maybe. Pass blocking, run blocking, endurance. Values money is a it's, it's on the high side, but you know not Antonio Brown high like 120, because you know that's what his is. Low work ethic that troubles me. That troubles me. Like security though, and loyalty. We did win this year, right? Why don't we offer this guy? Well, contract. Here we go. Let's go to contract. And he signed for two years and it's back loaded, right? So he's currently making $2.4 million a year. So he started 15 games this year. I don't think he's going to be a backup, right? I mean, he's going to be a starter. He's going to be a starter. Um, we'll go. We'll go front heavy. But he's making two point four now. So I want to pay him about three seven five. Let's do three years. And um, if you start, if you start seventeen games, and you get. Uh, okay, I don't know what that means. A bonus of five? All right, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. Um, okay, well, I don't, I, I don't really like that, but let's, let's, uh, let's submit that and see what happens. Okay. So he'll he'll actually get a nice pay raise. See, there's no guaranteed money. Where you know, I, I was hoping you could do guaranteed money and like reduce that because they just re-signed Lyle Collins the same way, and they gave him like forty percent of the contract in a, in in uh, in, in uh, a signing bonus. So his base salary that counted towards the con salary cap actually went down. Um, all right, well, we've submitted that, so I don't know what that means. All right, well, we're going to end the season there. So we'll close out that. And I guess we will advance. We'll go OK. And there we are. All right, so we're at the beginning of the next season. We'll pick up their next episode. Guys, uh, let me know what you thought of the first year. Keep the questions coming if you have them. Hopefully I answered some of those today. I'm sorry this episode went a little long, but you know, with the added questions and stuff, that's going to happen. Not that big of a deal at the end of the day, in my opinion. All right, we will see you guys uh, next episode for next season. Take care, hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you around. Take care. Bye.